If you've been holding out hope for Nikola Motors to come through and deliver an affordable all-electric car or maybe even unseat Tesla as the new sustainable eco-friendly car manufacturing king, then we have some bad news for you. Nikola was never subtle about its ambitions, going so far as to take the unclaimed half of the same famous scientist's name Elon Musk's company had adopted for itself, the Nikola of Nikola Tesla. When Nikola was founded in 2014, the company came out of the gate wanting their flagship product, the Nikola One, to be a competitive semi-truck cab capable of keeping pace with the heaviest load-bearing trucks on the market as well as being completely emission-free. In December of 2016, the startup unveiled the first Nikola One prototype. A statement from Nikola says the truck would deliver 2,000 pounds of torque and 1,000 horsepower, complemented by an 800 to 1,200 mile range. The prototype would be powered via a combination of the lithium battery and charged hydrogen cells. Nikola hoped to have market units in production by 2020, which didn't happen. In fact, the company has since moved on to the Nikola 2 without ever releasing the Nikola 1. As of December 1st, Nikola claims to have taken $3 billion worth of pre-order payments, but that figure is highly suspect for reasons we'll unpack in a moment. Nikola currently advertises two vehicles, the Nikola 2 and the Nikola Tray, both of which are large trailer pulling rigs. Nikola has previously floated a design for an all-electric off-road vehicle, though that prospect has been taken off its website. The company also has ambitious plans for recharging stations powered by solar panels. Things started to pick up for Nikola in the last few years. In 2019, after Nikola claimed to have a battery twice as effective as Tesla's, the U.S. Department of Energy awarded Nikola a $1.7 million grant to fund research into high-tech battery technology capable of powering huge systems. General Motors even entered into a partnership with Nikola to produce a zero-emission pickup truck dubbed the Nikola Badger. Nikola went this far, raising verifiable millions of dollars and claimed to have raised billions of dollars without producing one actual piece of hardware. That's right, Nikola to this day has not released one single working product, prototype or custom technology, not even a battery. While it's not unheard of to face setbacks when pioneering new technology, what Nikola engaged in was outright fraud, as blown open by the explosive Hindenburg Research Group report released in September of 2020. The findings within the report point to the unfortunate truth that Nikola was nothing more than a get-rich-quick scheme from its inception. There are numerous instances of Nikola outright faking functionality in its prototypes. The most famous instance of this is a commercial for the Nikola One which showed the sleek futuristic truck driving around the desert as car commercials often do. This was a big deal for the company as it was the first proof that their truck could drive itself around under hydrogen power. Previously, all prototypes had only been shown stationary on showroom floors and press event stages. The commercial contained no disclaimer or notice, nothing to make viewers suspect that the Nikola One wasn't operational, which is why it was shocking and, for many investors, angering to learn that to film the promo, Nikola had towed the truck to the top of a hill and filmed it rolling down under no power but normal gravity. The prototype was completely unable to drive itself. Hindenburg was able to recreate the commercial in the same location with a similar vehicle without touching the gas pedal once. There have been other frauds too. At one press event, the Nikola One cab, purportedly a fully functional model, was being powered by a discrete cable threaded behind the back tire of the model. It seems the truck wasn't even able to power its headlights by itself. So how did a company full of radically empty promises, ostensibly a battery startup unable to power headlights during a 30-minute press conference, wind up with a $1.7 billion grant from the government and a partnership with one of the largest vehicle manufacturers in the world? This is where things get complicated. It is possible, not probable, but possible, that Nikola possesses some kind of hydrogen-powered battery tech that has a promising future, which they've simply over-promised on 
but may eventually yield material results. If this is the case, we have yet to see any evidence whatsoever, yet there is certainly circumstantial evidence to suggest the existence of some tech in the infancy stages of development. It boils down to who you want to believe when determining whether Nikola ever actually had any promising tech or if it was all a scam. Their founder, former CEO, and proven con man, Trevor Milton, or the Hindenburg Group. The Hindenburg Group has poured a lot of time and resources into a huge, damning investigation of Nikola, obtaining texts, recorded calls, emails, leaks from employees, and photographs detailing extensive lies and misrepresentations. The report is huge and comprehensive, but it is not as objective as it could be. The Hindenburg Research Group, ironically drawing its name from another not-so-successful hydrogen-powered vehicle, is a short-selling firm. For those who don't know, short-selling is a tactic on the stock market involving the future prices of stock. To give a very basic explanation, short sellers seek out stocks they think will devalue over time. They buy up shares of the stock through a borrowing system, then sell them at the current market price to other investors. When the stock devalues, the short seller pays back the devalued price, no longer borrowing the stocks, thus netting massive profits. This is Hindenburg's business model. They singled out Nikola, borrowed stock, and sold to investors. Then they released their report. It was a good bet, too. The report triggered a cascading wave of bad news for Nikola. The SEC and the DOJ launched investigations into Nikola for criminal fraud, which resulted in GM pulling their deal, which almost immediately threw Nikola stock into a spiral, devaluing by 27% overnight, making it the perfect time to repay the borrowed stocks. Because of the nature of the stock market being driven by perception and opinion, a report of this magnitude can crash any stock to a certain extent. In summary, Hindenburg bet against a stock they knew would crash, then wrote a report and released it to devalue the stock, then presumably cashed in on the bet. It's also not an accident that the report released on the same day as the GM deal. When GM and Nikola announced their partnership, Nikola stock jumped to $50.05 a share. The report was released the next day, bringing the stock down in the following week to a low of 17.88. If you were to short one share of Nikola stock, buying and selling at the prospective highs and lows, you could make 32.17 per stock. Hindenburg declined to disclose how much money it has wrapped up in shorting Nikola. Whether coming from an objective source or not, the Hindenburg report is too expansive to ignore, and the behavior of Milton, who stepped down after the report brought up allegations of sexual misconduct on his part, only seems to confirm the report's worst findings. Milton has founded four companies in the past, all of which ended up dissolving after fraud allegations and investor scandals. Milton seems to have a pattern of pump and dump schemes, that is, starting an exciting company and inflating stock prices by making false promises, lying to investors, and faking results, then when the company is valued high, selling shares and skipping town before the proverbial house of cards falls over. Milton also has a history of getting caught in lies, which the report outlines in detail. It seems as though he has a habit of making up millions of dollars, asserting that he has invented imaginary tech and promising tech he had no intention of following through with. This is the interesting part, though. The Hindenburg report has been out for six months now, and Nikola has not completely collapsed. Always before, with Milton's companies, they folded under the slightest critical perspective. The stock has started rising again and climbing back to 34 per share in November. There's also the fact that Nikola employed real scientists who are now trying to recover the company's credibility. These are the same scientists who felt bad enough about scamming investors that they leaked information to Hindenburg. Between DOE contracts, hiring real scientists, and the persistence of the company after Milton's departure, it looks as though Milton may have built a company beginning to develop true hydrogen-powered technology purely by accident out of an attempted scam. Only time will tell for sure.